Small EMFs, sometimes referred to as thermometric EMFs, of course thermometric EMFs are actually small EMFs, are always of the order 10 to the power negative 3 or 10 to the power negative 4 volts. They are always very small. Now we're going to discuss how we find these small EMFs using a potentiometer. Now in our diagram here we can see a potentiometer circuit. It is connected to a thermocouple and of course it is from the thermocouple. The, the EMF of the thermocouple which is always very small is what we seek to establish using a potentiometer. Now since the EMF or the potential difference that is to be measured across this thermocouple is very small, it means that the current that is flowing through the slide wire should be equally small. Why should it be equally small? So that it's able to match up with this small thermometric EMF that we are able to, or that we seek to find. So we are able to achieve this by connecting a uniform slide wire in series with a very high re variable resistances. And of course, these very high variable resistances that we are connecting in series with the slide wire are meant to minimize the amount of current flowing through so that when we are able to step down or to reduce the amount of current flowing through the primary circuit, we are able to get a potential difference across the slide wire that is of, that is of the same order as the potential of the EMF that we seek to establish or to we seek to measure in the secondary circuit. So to begin with the description of the experiment, we set up the circuit as arranged before below. Of course, in this circuit, you can see a driver cell right here. We have two cells that are two variable resistors right here, variable resistor M and variable resistor Q. This variable resistor is in series with that slide wire AB. Of course, the slide wire is having a slide jockey attached to it, which jockey is meant to hover all over it to be able to establish the balance point. This is connected to a galvanometer, a center zero galvanometer, which is also in series with a protective resistor that is meant to protect it from excess current. This has a bypass switch that bypasses the, prote the protective galvanometer. We normally do that when we are trying to get the actual balance point. Then uh, we have switch S, which we shall connect to a port, port two or port one. When we connect S to 1, it means we have killed this blue part of the circuit and it's only this green one that is working. If we connect this S to port 2, it means we've killed the green part and all the, 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 the secondary circuit is only comprised of the blue one. Then we also have the standard cell. Of course, the standard cell is a cell whose EMF is known. So this is the setup of our apparatus. So this is the setup of the circuit. This is how we connect the circuit. So after setting up the circuit like this, the variable resistors Q and M are first adjusted so that the PD that is flowing through the primary circuit is very small. And of course, when it is very small, it makes the potential, di it makes the potential difference across the slide wire to be small too, so that it matches with the EMF or it matches with the order of the EMF that is supposed to be measured in the secondary circuit. Remember, we say that for thermometric EMFs, these are very small EMFs whose order is of 10, is it, whose order is times 10 to the power negative 3 volts or times 10 to the power negative 4 volts. They are normally really very small EMFs. So after doing that, uh, our next procedure is that now we connect part port S, we connect it to port 2. Of course, when you connect S to 2, it means that we are key, this green part of the circuit is eliminated. We are now concerned with this. So when we connect S to 2, we now start sliding this jockey along AB so that we obtain a balance point. We do so while K is open. So we slide the jockey along AB until we obtain a balance point where galvanometer shows no deflection. So when we get the balance point at that point J, we then go ahead and adjust the, the these Q and M, the variable resistors. We adjust them again. The reason as to why we adjust them again is to make sure 
that we are getting a reasonable length, a reasonable balance length. So it is more like try and error. You keep adjusting Q, you adjust M, so that at balance point, you are able to get a reasonable or a measurable balance length. So after getting a measurable balance length, then we bypass this protective resistor. So that means we're going to close K. So when you close K so that we bypass it, then we adjust this jockey again and we are able to establish the accurate balance point when we've put this in the circuit. So when we get the accurate balance point, remember we say that at balance point, the potential difference across the portion of the balance point of the wire is equal to the P. Now here the, is equal to the potential difference across the components in the secondary circuit. Now in this case, since we connected S to 2 and this green part is not out, it's out of the circuit. When we connect S to 2, it means that the ES, which is the EMF of this standard cell, since uh, the EMF of this standard cell is equal to the EMF between J and C. But remember with J and C and J, we are having this portion of the wire and then also along we have Q involved. So it means that in our calculations, we're supposed to include Q as well. So in our write-up, for the balance point, when S is at 2 and K is closed at balance, this is how it will look like. So at balance, ES, which is our standard cell, the EMF across the standard cell is going to be equal to the potential difference that is across C and J. Of course, the potential difference across C and J is going to be the current that is going through that portion times the resistance between C and J. Now, unlike before where the balance, it was all through was just a wire. In this case, our effective resistance between C and J is comprising of a variable resistor Q and also that portion of the slide wire to the balance point. So it means that in this case, it's going to become I times uh, our, the effective resistance is going to be the Q, which since that variable resistor Q is in series with that portion of the balance length, so it's going to be that resistance, the effective resistance of that portion is going to be Q plus the resistance of the portion of the balance length. Of course, the resistance of the portion of the balance length is going to be the resistance per centimeter, multiply that by the balance length, the balance length being LS. Now, how do we get resistance per centimeter? Remember, we said earlier, one of the factors that affect resistance of a conductor is distance. The longer the distance, the higher the resistance. In other words, uh, when uh, in other words, the resistance of a conductor is always directly proportional to the length. So it means that if you're having a wire and it is less than ten centimeters, and you want uh, and and you know that it's the, the entire resistance of the wire is ten ohms. For you to find the value of R, which is the resistance per centimeter, means you're going to find you're going to divide the 10 ohms, divide that by the 10 centimeter. And so it means that it will be 1 ohm per centimeter. So that's how we get the resistance per centimeter. We get it by simply getting the resistance of the whole wire and we divide it by the entire length of the wire to get the resistance per centimeter or the resistance per unit length. So this is how we get our first equation or our first expression. Again, where R is the resistance per unit length, the length can be centimeter, it can be meters or in units, and L subscript S is the balance length. So this is what we get when we connect S to portion two. Now we are going to repeat these procedures, but this time around we are going to connect S to portion one or to port one. So when we connect S to port one, it means that we have killed this blue part out. And so what is in, our, in the secondary circuit, the functioning is this, then from A like that. So this is what is working. So the EMF of the slide wire is now balanced against the thermometric EMF. And this is achieved by putting S into position one. When we put S in position one, K, uh, while K is open, we are going to move the sliding jockey along AB and obtain an approximate balance point. After getting an approximate balance balance point, then we bypass the passive res the, the protective resistor by closing switch K. 
and then we continue tapping the jockey along the length AB until we get the accurate balance point. So when we get the ba accurate balance point, we go ahead and measure the balance length we've gotten, which in this case we shall call it L, and then we'll go ahead and make our calculations. We shall go and say at balance there for E, the E I'm talking about is this the EMF across the thermocouple, which is the thermometric EMF we are looking for, is equal to the potential difference across the balance point AJ. Of course, a point across A and that portion J. And of course, we know that this EMF here, E, is going to be equal to the current that is going through that portion times the resistance between A and J. And we know that that is going to be equal to current times the resistance across AJ is equal to the resistance per centimeter times the balance length we got which is L and there we'll be getting our second equation so of course now after getting our two equations now we will we will go ahead and compare the two equations now our first equation was this our second equation was right there so we can go ahead and substitute the value the current going through that portion of the wire is the same so we can substitute for i in this second equation since we're interested in finding the thermometric emf or the small emf in the secondary circuit we'll go ahead and substitute for the value of i into this expression and we're able to get our value of e this is exactly what was achieved here we got uh, our value of E is equal to IRS, this is the second equation. So to substitute for value of I, we go and make I the subject of the formula in this equation. When we make I the subject of the formula in this equation, we have I is going to be ES over this, which is what we've done here. It's going to be ES over Q plus RLS. And of course, that is, we've just substituted for the value of I in this expression times R which is the resistance per centimeter times LS, which is the balance length. Then of course we end up with our expression E is equal to this. We know the balance length LS, we know the resistance per centimeter, we know the value of Q, which is the, re the, the variable resistor, we know the EMF of the standard cell. So since we know all these, then we can go ahead and find the EMF of the thermometric EMF or the small EMF that we seek to find. Now this is one way of doing it or you can treat these two equations in this another way. You can choose to get equation 2 and you divide it by equation 1. Then when you divide these two equations, since you're looking for the value of E, you make E the subject of the formula and you'll come up with the same expression. This is the second equation. E is equal to IRLS. Divide that by the first equation which is ES is equal to I into Q plus RLS. And of course from here, we can go ahead and make E the subject of the formula by simply saying E is going to be uh, I R L S times E S. Divide that by what is down here, which is I into Q plus R L S. This value of I and that value of I will cancel out and you remain with your expression for E being R L S E S and you'll find that this expression we've got here is exactly the same as this expression that we have arrived at there and that is how we're able to get the thermometric EMF using a potentiometer this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksemo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you.